Uh, hey everyone, welcome to this week five big idea video in English 102. This week we're talking about the essay, which I know you're super excited to do. So without further ado, let's uh, let's make things nice and pretty here and let's get started. So there are two things you need to know about when it comes to this essay. One, there's an instruction sheet which is full on narrative that allows you to see the big picture of what's due for this particular essay. The second thing you need to know is that there is a rubric, which is also linked in Blackboard, which has sort of a row by row glandular feel to it. So you can see exactly all the things that you need for this particular uh, essay. Does that make sense? Lots of bugs out here too. <laughs> well, it's outside, Brian, right? So one of the biggest questions that comes up with this particular essay is, what the heck do I write about? So this is an, an essay about characterization, um, and you're going to be thinking about one of the characters that we've read about within this first workshop. So I, I want to just kind of go over really quickly um, the, this, the one specific prompt that you need to really focus on, and this is found on the workshop one instruction sheet. It says this, analyze one or more of the principal characters in a story that we have read so far in workshop one. The purpose of a character analysis is to determine the character's outstanding traits in order to understand their motivation. Underline that key part, motivation. Uh, effect on others or the stories, stories as a whole. Consider any, all of the literary terms that we've studied in this workshop as support in making your argument. And specifically, chapter seven on characterization will take you really far, chapter seven. And then I added a little bit to the instructions. This isn't a deal breaker for anyone or anything. It basically says, think about a character's choices and what changes these choices might bring. Uh, some neighbors were poking around. Hey, uh, so the thing to look at next is something called the character matrix, which I've listed up in Blackboard. And this can be, I think, one of the more useful things for you to be able to look at first after you read the instructions for the essay. So the character matrix then lists all the stories that we've read so far in workshop one. It also gives a listing of all the characters that we've talked about. And there are some that are major and minor characters for sure. Um, and then there's a general description of each one. So I've highlighted a few that people have written about in the past. So from Love Letters, people loved Mickey and her transformation into Megan. Uh, people have loved the story Two Kinds. Uh, and the character called Jing Mei, uh, because there's so much conflict going on between her and her mother. Uh, folks have also loved the story called Famine and the unnamed protagonist there, because that story is just so weird. Um, also, according to Monk, Gina has been in just about every paper, not every paper, but a lot of the papers that I've read. And sometimes people even go so far as to compare Gina and Jing Mei um, in terms of uh, their motivations and the reasons why they do things. In everyday use as well, uh, the character called Mama, folks love to write about her, uh, and the minor characters, Dee and Maggie. And then also, I'm also seeing, well, I have seen in the past uh, that Jimmy Cross from The Things They Carried was another popular character to write about in the transformation, the transformation, I can speak, that that character went through through the course of the story. So when looking further into the uh, character matrix, one of the things I like about this particular document is it gets into the idea of a general description of each character. So when we look at two kinds for Jing Mei, we can see this is a story about a daughter and a mother with a simmering, a simmering relationship. And then when we look at famine, uh, this is a story about, it says denial and lost opportunity. And then uh, with Gina, it's about desire and rebellion. And then with Mama and Everyday Use, this is about straight family conflict. And then with Jimmy Cross, this is also about desire, uh, a story about many things soldiers carry, but also literal. Uh, so there are things with Jimmy Cross that, are, that he has issues with. And one of them has to do with his desire for um, Martha back home. So when it comes to sources, this is an issue for a lot of people. They kind of wonder exactly what, uh, what they need. And so, of course, the, the instruction sheet lays that out, but uh, on my notes, I, I wanted to get into this in a little bit more detail. So again, six total sources. So I'm gonna be looking down. The first source is gonna come from the Approaching Literature textbook. So whatever story that you're reading, that's gonna be one source. 
Uh, the second source is also going to be from approaching literature, and that's going to be from like maybe chapter seven, where you're drawing in information about characterization. The third source will also be from approaching literature, and that's going to be the part about reader response criticism. So have a look at that as well. So that's three sources all from one place. So that means three separate entries on your Works Cited page. The fourth and fifth source will be from research databases that you find through Blackboard. So one that my students love, and you can get the most mileage out of this, is called Gale Virtual, Gale Literature Resource Center. I had like a kind of brain, brain melt there for a second. And then the sixth and final source is the one that you're gonna be grabbing an interview from a student uh, in our discussion board. So go back to the discussion board where we're talking about any one of these characters. So it's gonna span maybe a couple of weeks. Go back to one in particular where that story is dealt with and then see what your, um, what your colleagues, your peers have said. And then we're gonna be drawing one of their quotations into our paper. So those are the six total sources. I made it through. Okay, so when it comes to the actual characters and research that you do, I just want you to know that some characters you're going to find more information about in the Gale Literature Resource Center, I got that one right, uh, than others. So for instance, as I'm looking at the character matrix, um, some people have told me, uh, some former students have told me that um, Everyday Use and Alice Walker seem to have a lot of stuff going on um, within that particular database. And then my notes also tell me too that the things they carried also has a lot of stuff within that particular database. So as I'm looking further down on my notes on the script, uh, it also tells me that if you can't find specific things in that particular database about the story, then start thinking about broader themes, like what are the things going on in that story? And then start doing searches based on what you see happening within the story. Now I can help you with this. Just let me know what you're what you're searching for and what you're not finding, and then I can help sort of tailor some, some search terms as you move forward. So, but generally speaking, if you're not finding a lot, start thinking about the themes that you find in those databases, excuse me, in, in the stories, start thinking about motivation of characters, and then start thinking about those literary terms as well, specifically related to characterization. The one thing that's great about the Gale Literature Resource Center, I got it right twice now, is that you're gonna get uh, real quick uh, story summaries, character summaries as well to give you a kind of hint on what's going on um, within those particular pieces. And that can allow you to springboard into whatever question that you wanna answer for your essay because first and foremost, this is question-based inquiry. So what that means is you have a question about the story or character and you're using the research as a way to answer that question. So that's what I got for this particular big idea video. Thanks for watching and we will see you in the next one and good luck this week. Take care. Oh, peace.